Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feature Crew. Today we're going to dig in a bit to, into Codex. It's a coding agent that works in your terminal. And we're going to see exactly what that's like. We're going to put it through its paces. We're going to use O4 Mini today. We've shown you all what it can do in the chat interface. So what happens when we give it over to the terminal and let it run agentically. We're going to use a, a full auto mode on it and see if it behaves more agentically here. Uh, lots of great things to find out. So let's dig in. So here we are in the terminal. So we went ahead and ran the Codex command. We've installed it and made sure we set up the API to you get this interactive CLI experience. So we're running against O4 Mini. And then you get this box here where you can provide a prompt. By default, it's gonna be in this kind of human in the loop mode. We're gonna start off with doing a planet generation prompt as we usually do. The only thing we've kind of changed here is we'll remove the reference where it says, create this in a single HTML file because Codex is able to run commands like this. It's able to actually make files, instantiate them, get dependencies and so on. So we're relaxing the requirement of it being one file. It does take quite a while, it seems like. Um, you can see each request might take like 10 seconds. They have noted that Codex is still in this open beta sort of thing, like it's potentially buggy and so on. So um, we'll see how it goes with this request. Optimistic though, I mean, giving it the flexibility to map this out how it wants should lead to a better result. We'll find out. Fingers crossed. Awesome. So after about a minute, it's come back with its first kind of substantial human the loop command. Um, so it's saying it wants to apply a patch. It's basically going to add a file and add this to the file. So now we get a series of options, which is quite cool. Um, you can just default approve it. You can ask it to explain the command. You can give it feedback. You can switch to approval mode, or you can like deny. And so it's quite nice how they've given you many different options. But just this first time, we're gonna go ahead and click yes. That will then mean if we go look at our folder structure that this was actually created. So if we have a look at, you know, the folder actually inside a VS code, you can see it created index.html and it has gone ahead and patched that in. Um, so as it goes through, it's going to keep kind of waiting for me. What we'll do is next time we get a command, we will go ahead and set it to full auto mode and it can just basically go ahead and do whatever it wants. Generally for the purpose of this video, we just want to see it iterate through and see like what it creates and how we can kind of work with it. So back in the terminal, um, it's wanting to patch in another file, script.js. So that's the actual JavaScript gives it the kind of functionality whereas HTML is the kind of uh, document structure of the page. This is great, like usually it kind of puts it all into one file. It's correctly broken it out already. So that's a big plus to see it's actually doing something. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch approval mode from suggest to full auto. And then we'll go ahead and approve this command. And from now onwards, it should just continue to make these files until it says it's complete. Um, and at that point, we can go ahead, visualize what it's doing. Aye, 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 aye. Awesome, so here we are, it made a planet. We had to make one quick edit because we removed a line about not using all the controls. So we just had the liberty of it make that change and it has rendered. Not too bad. Um, it looks like it kind of drops. I mean, it's got rotation speed. I don't seem to be able to pan. So we did give it a big set of like bullet points. It hasn't gone through and implemented all of those, but we can go ahead and give that as a follow up. But at the very least, kudos that it was able to make a planet um, and it was able to you know, create the first two separate files. We weren't prescriptive in saying you need you know, two files. It just chose to do HTML and JS as it should for like a very simple web thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, folks, yeah. thoughts on what you're seeing? I'm noticing like, I, I kind of like the noise. I, I don't know. Mm. I, I, like, I like how the terrain looks. Uh, as Dylan was saying, it kind of lost some of the prompt with the atmosphere and the clouds. Or there is... Maybe clouds? There's so, clouds. Sorry. There's Hard to tell. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think some of the zoom and controls got lost when we asked it to remove orbit controls. So maybe we can ask it to bring those back, but without using the orbit controls deprecated library. Yep, yep. Okay, let's tee that off and we'll see how it runs. So we're just gonna say a very specific add the ability to pan, rotate, and zoom in. And we're just making sure that it doesn't use orbit control again. Let's go ahead and send that off. It's in full auto mode. So we'll see it kind of make edits as it wants. Um, if I scroll up, you can see the previous edit it did, um, but let's give it a few minutes probably to make the edit. Okay, so it's added quite a lot. Looks like it should hopefully be able to orbit pan and zoom. Um, and let's see, uh, nope, not working. So it's not applied to changes again, I believe. Uh, it just hasn't applied the patch, it seems like. So doing a very quick debugging, 
we saw that in the terminal, uh, it, although it said it patched, when I looked at the actual file, it didn't patch. So I think it's been maybe a little bit of a bug. We'll switch back to the terminal and see if it will kind of correct itself. If we say, hey, like the patch didn't apply. Um, otherwise, we might have just stumbled upon a bug. Disappointing that it wasn't able to like patch automatically. We'll try maybe a few more iterations here. Okay, so given the patch didn't reapply, let's just see if we, instead of having to make this manual change in the file, I'm going to see if it can kind of self-correct itself and just reissue the command. I think it's really thinking about uh, what it needs to do. The research preview, emphasis on preview. It looked like it, again, tried, it did some interesting analysis to see, like, did it actually apply the file? Did, like, it entail um, to kind of look at the file? It said I inspected it. Um, so currently there are no mouse controls at all. Let me add back, you know, the, the stuff. It has a patch. But again, it looks like the patch didn't apply. My only working theory for how this works is if you change the permission mode. Because the only time it successfully did these things was in the permission mode. It's never oh. done anything successfully in full auto. I oh. think. So we've been invest we've been trying to figure out why isn't it patching. And if we look back and what happened so far, when we were in the approval mode where you had to approve every single step it did it did manage to create files and edit correctly. So we're wondering if this is just a bug with full auto mode. So we're going to switch it back to approval mode suggest and see if there's just a bug in the research preview where this mode ends up working better. So, okay, uh, same, roughly the same patch as said before, but we're in that suggest mode, so we have to approve each step. So we're hoping that by hitting yes here, this will fix our problem. Let's and see. we'll successfully apply it. It did, it did, it did. So uh, you can't see, but I'm looking at it on Visual Co Studio Code and the file did change. So it kind of seems like the full auto mode isn't patching correctly. So maybe a bit of a bug. Again, don't want to say that everyone hits this issue, but at least right now we're in this issue. So we will just let it kind of finish out and we'll see if that's now actually made a difference. Feature crew first, you hear, heard it here first, folks. Here we are in the planet and then, wow, it works. So, well, Whoa. I mean, <laughs> interesting much. visual. Uh, but, but so we did do an atmosphere, cool. wait. If we zoom in and you think that's the atmosphere? I'm pretty sure that's the atmosphere and it's just not scaled correctly. Yeah. It certainly compli complied with the requests. We just were running into the issue with patch. Um, and you know, like this is actually not a bad implementation for two steps. It did not too bad with like noise generation. It's not the best, not the worst. And then it actually has complied with the feature request. So, hey, I mean, it looks like it's not necessarily degrading model performance in that sense. I'm just happy to see it working. Um, so pro tip, use suggest mode. Do not use full auto yet. But yeah. uh, super curious to see how this works with an existing code base. Because that's part of the billing, right? Is, okay, you can drop yeah. this into your existing code base and magic will happen. So bring on the magic. The one thing I wanted to add here is that we wanted to try to get a comparison of O4 Mini in the chat client just so we could see if it's better or worse in the Codex tool. And O4 Mini, we tried many times, we tried multiple shots, uh, and we weren't able to get it to work in the chat client to generate a planet. So it seems like for complex tasks, for long prompts, that uh, the extra reasoning, the extra steps, and the general environment provided by Codex might help with some complex tasks, might sort of improve model performance on these sort of one-shot prompts. But as Chris said, the real purpose of this tool is larger code bases. And so let's switch over to a real code base and see how it performs there. So we've loaded up Node Space, which if you're a viewer of the channel, you know is our Omni playground where you can test different models uh, in with different output types. And so this is the homepage. And in one of our previous videos, we had a model add a latest videos sort of widget so that we could see the latest videos when you land on the homepage. And there's clearly this sort of centering issue uh, where the videos are all left aligned and we want them to be centered. So we're gonna go and have it make that fix. Here we are back in Codex. We are now in a different file in a different directory uh, for node space. And we'll go ahead and just give it that simple command. Again, this is kind of like a needle in the haystack thing. Can it actually find the information it needs to make a simple fix? So let me tee that up. So as we've just learned, we will continue to go ahead and actually just manually apply these edits. It was doing some commands to navigate the repo. It actually started to like kind of signal down to be like, okay, it's in the pages. It's kind of finding the YouTube preview row. It's figuring out like these are the things that need to be improved without looking too much to be like, hey, oh, it's doing the right thing, not doing the right thing. Let's continue to kind of vibe code here and just keep hitting approve. And um, we'll keep going until it's finished. And then fingers crossed, it's made the right edits. All right. Okay. So it says it's done some kind of fix. And there we go. So it has done it. 
great job. It figured out exactly what needed to change, made the perfect change, and because we gave it the you know approval, it went ahead and patched it, automatically reloaded. Fantastic. For the next feature we wanted to do, we haven't demoed this on the channel, but we were making something that allows LLMs to play poker together. So leave us a comment if you want us to see us fully flesh this out and demo it. But uh, it basically allows players to be different AI models and they will go through and kind of verse each other at poker. So it's a slightly different version of this. We want it to implement something similar, but for Solitaire. A little bit easier in terms of like the code needed. So what we're going to ask Codex to do is add a Solitaire game space that's kind of like the poker game space that exists. So it'll take this as a reference um, and hopefully be able to search and see, okay, well, I can take these pieces and shuffle it around to make Solitaire bit bigger of a request. This is now maybe like medium difficulty. Um, we want to see how Codex does. So I'll tee that up in the console and we'll kick it off. Like we just said, we wanted to add a solitaire game space that allows LMs to play solitaire similar to the poker game space. Again, it seemed to work pretty well with a very just generic vibe Cody esque uh, request before. So we'll see if it now figures out how to go from just this. We can already see it's looking at spaces. So fingers crossed, it's going to have to kind of make a bit of a mental model of what does the space mean? Um, for now, we'll let it iterate, see how it goes. So it's added a solitaire space, it seems. Game over, you've completed the game. It's not bad. Okay. Initial Klondike. Oh, okay. I just pushed all the responsibility to the... <laughs> it's like, LLM, you figure it out. You go lay it out. It's come back. It did push up a solitaire space, and it's added at least maybe the skeleton. It does note down here. Let me know if you want to flesh out the game state view. So we'll go ahead and show you what it got to. Here we go. So I'm going to click start. <laughs> Let's see. I mean... And you did see like the poker space in the prompt, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Like poker space. Hmm. Here's what it would look like the following. Please provide the current game state for the next turn. Oh um, my god. Right, I see what you're saying, that the LLM has to do it all. Yep. Yeah. 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 It, like, it's at least tried to make the skeleton of what a solitaire-like game would look like. You can see it's got, like, attributes here, like, your false and face up true so trying to make these stacks and stuff like that but it's not actually rendered it you know like over here you're seeing this is probably where the game board would be right um it just hasn't done any of the rendering in terms of making it look like cards and stuff we intentionally gave it very ambiguous vibe coding like requests just saying make it like the poker game but when you look at the poker game it had the like cards and so on so we're going to go ahead and give it one more iteration to say like hey like improve the visual rendering, don't show maybe like text, and we'll see if it can reuse some of the cards that we previously had in the poker game as well. So uh, we don't really like that text visualization, and it said, hey, do you want to flesh out the game state view? That's exactly what we want to do. So we're asking it to flesh that out with the proper card graphics. And we're also saying use the same card from poker space um, because there was a little card uh, representation, so it should even either componentize it or use it in the component if one touch exists. Problem is we, we, it still is having the LLM do all the logic. Like, it's still so wrong. Yeah. I mean, we should probably say, like, at, at this point, when I was doing poker space, like, months ago, with GitHub Copilot agent mode, and it was kicking ass. Didn't even really have an example. So, came back, it made a few edits, it's gone ahead and suggested that it's now actually rendering a proper solitaire board. Let's switch up and have a look. Uh, all right. It parsed it. So, it has certainly passed the request. Um, but I mean, again, these are not going to be interactable. The state looks maybe even a little bit more broken in terms of where it will continue from here. And as we were discussing... My biggest issue with the way it implemented this is that, like, it's asking the LLM to do all of the game logic. So yeah. it's only giving the LLM the game state, or I, I, in fact, it's actually asking the LLM to generate the game state, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, so we haven't d dived into the code, but, but we do know just from looking at this, that like there's a fundamental misalignment to how it is implemented here. The poker game, which we asked it to base this implementation off of, has uh, the actual poker game logic in code, right? So that we can trust it and that the LLMs are only submitting their moves. In this case, the LLM is responsible for maintaining the whole state of the game and therefore would be highly susceptible to hallucinations or mistakes. We could keep pushing it, but at this point, we're we're starting to see the crack shine through uh, of this tool. What do you guys think? I mean, this yeah, is beneath I... like Lovable's output, right? Mm. Which 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 service do we use? Was it Lovable to build Solitaire? We broke. It was Lovable, right? Because we wanted to, we wanted to see the edit tool. So this this is beneath the Lovable output. Not super impressed yet. I mean, it's great that it can go through a whole code base, but 
I don't know. I don't think I'd push it much more. And yeah, you know, like compared to code start with lovable, it could just be getting confused because any code base, but frankly, then what's the point of this tool, right? Like the whole thing needs to be, it can ground itself in the code. And again, this is an early codex release, but it doesn't seem to be adding anything, you know, certainly not better than like say cursor, wind surf and stuff like that. So I'm like, not sure why you'd go through the hassle of getting the CLI up and like changing your workflow. Um, maybe it's just a very early release and it will continue to improve. Otherwise, a bit confused right now. The as we alluded to, it seems like I might get a little bit more performance out of a model. But again, is it really enough to justify jumping into a CLI and having to wrangle with it versus just asking what you need to ask and say Chat GPT, then iterating with a more like you know well-defined product like a Copilot cursor and so on when you have like actual like production use so a little bit confusing but hey this is our first review um anything like that and you had to you give your open ai key right so for your average chat gpt user they don't even know what that is or where that is so if you have access to your open ai key you can actually use that in cursor or windsurf and then not have to pay for all the credits from cursor or windsurf so i really don't know why you use this etc like if you're technical enough to use this you're technical enough to use other products on the market that seem to already work better and are well established. So then it's a little bit confusing as to, you know, maybe you get a little bit of extra performance and you have customizability locally. You know, Codex is open source. You can see what it's doing, I guess. But um, yeah, not huge upgrade or benefit, at least from our initial tests here. Feels like a placeholder. Feels like mm. something cool will go here, but it's not here yet. Looking forward to doing a review of this in some number of months and seeing where it evolved. But yeah, I. I I can't see a use case for this right now. Do you get anything done? I agree. I mean, you know, I was disappointed by how it implemented these things. The only thing it did successfully was center the cards, right? Yeah. Uh, which is a tidy change that we could have done in a second. So like mm -hmm. Chris is saying, I'm not sure what the use case is, and I really hope they improve it. But for now, not looking good for these uh, command line tools. It's, it's reminiscent of, of Claude code, you know, at the beginning, except worse. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going to keep trying tools. We're thinking about trying Windsurf. We're thinking about revisiting Replit. So let us know what coding agents you've been using, what's been working for you, um, and let us know what you want to see us try. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Um, and if you want to follow along for these future videos, subscribe to the Future Crew. We would love to have you join. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.